Do you ever find yourself diagnosing Power Automate flows and all of a sudden you find out that you have flows that ran and you don't know why or you don't think they should have run? Today we're going to talk about how to solve that problem by using something called trigger conditions. Hi, my name is Mike, and if you're using SharePoint lists and libraries in your organization, you're probably leveraging them uh, in ways to run processes from them, maybe an approval process, or maybe you're managing content from them. I want to talk a little bit today about something called trigger conditions and how you can actually use that to enhance those processes and control them and avoid scenarios like race conditions or infinite loops. Uh, so sp the specific problems that I want to talk about remedying today are twofold. One is you need to be paying attention when your flows are running. You may need to throttle or restrict how many of them run at the same time. Um, and so you want to have some control over that. You want to be able to stop unwanted things from happening. So let's say you have a process where somebody's posted some content to a SharePoint list, and you're going to send a tweet out based on that. You want to make sure that every time that list item is updated, you're not sending the same tweet out again and again and again, right? That would be an unwanted consequence. The other thing you want to avoid doing is you want to avoid wasting execution cycles. So if you're controlling the way that your flows run, you can actually save yourself execution cycles. And if you have a lot of flows running in your environment, this can actually uh, be a cost savings for you. So let's talk about some remedies for these problems that I just brought up. One remedy that you might be tempted to use is called concurrency control. And you may have seen this as a setting in your trigger conditions in your Power Automate flows. And you might be tempted to use this to control when your process runs. And it can be effective in some scenarios. A couple things to point out with concurrency control. Once you turn it on, you cannot turn it off. So you'll have to rebuild your trigger or maybe rebuild parts of your flow if you decide to use it and then decide, oh, it doesn't work for me. Uh, the other thing to consider uh, about concurrency control is it doesn't give you the level of control that you might want in running your process. So if you want to be much more specific about the things that are happening in your process, when your process runs and what it does, or whether or not you have multiple processes that, are, that need to run in certain sequence or at certain times, concurrency control doesn't give you that complete uh, ability of control. Just to kind of briefly show you where that concurrency control setting is, uh, I'm gonna open up a flow that I have here. Uh, and in this particular flow, uh, you'll see that in the trigger condition, we have a settings option. And then in those settings, you have an option here at the bottom for concurrency control. And just really briefly, if you turn this on, you have the ability to restrict it to the number of, of runs of the flow that actually will run in parallel. But in either of these cases, they don't give us the complete control or the full control that you might want when you're dealing with a process that runs off of a SharePoint list or library. Okay, so that brings us to our next method of control, and that is trigger conditions. And trigger conditions, I will just tell you, they give you a lot of ability to control how your process runs, when it runs, um, and you can even use uh, trigger conditions and some of the, I guess, side effects of those, if you will, uh, to help to report out on what your process is doing and even uh, record an audit trail of, of sorts. Um, so let's dive right in, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a custom column on our SharePoint library. Um, and so to do that, I'm gonna dive in, and I have a policies library here. I've got a couple documents in my library, and this is just an out-of-the-box SharePoint document library. But I wanna create a column on this that allows me to control when my flow is actually gonna run. So we're gonna create a really simple single line of text column. We're gonna call it approval status. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a manual flow to kick off this process. And to do that, we're gonna choose an instant cloud flow. Um, we're gonna go ahead and give it a name, and we're gonna call it request policy approval, and we're gonna look in this list for the trigger we want, which is gonna be for a selected file. So this is gonna allow the user to select a file and then execute this specific process on that file. So this will allow the user to select a specific file and start this process on that file. So the first thing we need to do here in our flow is we're gonna actually select uh, the site, which is our demo data site, uh, and then this will give us an option to choose from the libraries or lists on our site. In this case, I'm choosing the policy library. Uh, and then the next thing we wanna do um, is we want to actually take control of the process for this particular document. So in this scenario, what we wanna do is rather than straight away start an approval process, we actually want to indicate that the approval process started. And so we're gonna do that by setting that approval status column to a specific value. Uh, so we're gonna look in here for a HTTP request to SharePoint. 
And we're gonna go ahead and configure this. Again, we're gonna configure this for our demo data site. Um, and we're going to be doing a post. And in this particular case, we're going to send a, a post request to the library in question. And so let me set that value. So there's our policies library. Um, and then we're going to send in the ID for the selected file. And so that's gonna affect that particular item. Um, and then the next thing we need to do is we need to set our header values. And so one of those is gonna be content type. Let me just go grab my reference here. And then what's important here is the body content. So in this particular case, we're gonna send in some JSON content and we're specifically gonna manipulate the approval status field and we're going to set the value to requested. So now we can save that and our flow is ready to run. And so in this particular case, get rid of that little warning message. Uh, once this has been registered on our library, I'll refresh my library. If we go look at our Power Automate menu on our library, we should see request policy approval show up and there it is. And so now the user will be able to click that uh, menu option and kick off the process. That said, that does not actually run the approval process. So let's talk about what it takes to do that. So, and this is where we can actually use our trigger conditions. So we've got this one started off. We're now gonna create a new flow. And our new flow is going to be the actual approval process. So we're gonna, in this case, it's gonna be an automated flow. Um, we're gonna call this policy approval. So the one we're looking for is when an item or a file is modified. There it is. And we're gonna go ahead and create this flow. So right away, we've got our trigger action, if you will. Um, so this is what will actually start the flow. We're gonna wire this up to connect to our SharePoint site and library, so our demo data site. And again, our policies library. Um, and in this particular case, this is where we can actually apply a trigger condition. So. Right now, the way this is configured, it will run any time a file in that library is updated. So in our manual flow, we're actually updating the metadata on that file. We're setting the approval status to requested, so that will be a trigger that will fire this off. But the thing we need to think about is later on in this approval process, let's say it's a multi-stage approval, approval process, someone else may be updating some additional metadata on that file or updating the file itself. That update would again trigger this flow. So that's where the trigger conditions come in handy and we can actually take complete control of the particular flow and when it runs. So if we go to the settings of our trigger action, we'll see at the bottom we have an option to add trigger conditions. Uh, and in this case, we're going to check that approval status value. Um, in our scenario, it's pretty simple. We're checking one field. You can check multiple fields here uh, for a combination of values. Um, in this case, we're looking for whether or not the approval status is equal to requested. And that is our signal that we're actually gonna start the approval process. So the very next thing we wanna do is we wanna update uh, the actual status of the document to stop this flow from running again. So to do that, we're going to again add, I'm gonna use the HTTP request to SharePoint to do that same thing that we did in the last one. So again, we're gonna choose our demo data, go grab my URI for my library. We're gonna do a post. Plug in the ID of the document in question. And again, our headers. And then again, the important part is the body content. So we're gonna plug in that approval status and we're gonna set it in this case to pending. So now we're in a, in a pending state and once we've set that to a pending state, this flow will not run again. So then the next thing we wanna do is we actually wanna, let, let's say, run our approval. So we'll add a step to this for approval. Go start and wait for an approval. And we'll make this really simple, first to respond. And we'll assign it to me. And we can put a link to the item in here just to help the user and we'll provide the file name. Okay, so now we have our approval created. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do after we're, we get the approval is we might wanna send an email to someone. 
Uh, so we're going to go find an option to send an email. So there's our send an email action. In this case, let's say we want to send this to the user who actually uh, submitted the document. Um, and so we're going to go find that user here in this list. So it's going to be this uh, created by email or modified by email. You could choose either one in this scenario. Um, we're going to provide a subject. So we're going to do the file name. Provide the name. And then we want to provide an approval status. So let's go look for our approval response. Let's just put the uh, comments from the responder, which should show up here. And so then that will send an email ultimately. And then the very last thing that we want to do after we've done something with the approval is we actually want to set the status of our document back to something else. So in this scenario, we could set it to uh, back to empty, um, or we might want to set it to complete. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and set it to complete in this scenario. Um, and to do that, I'm going to make this a little bit easier on myself. I'm actually going to copy this HTTP request and paste it from the clipboard. And then we simply have to go update our body to be complete. Okay, I think I'm ready to go. All right, so that saved, no errors. So now I think we're ready to actually test this scenario. There's one more thing I wanna do uh, before we do that, and I wanna jump back to our manual flow. Um, and in the scenario that the uh, policy approval manual flow that the user kicks off, so right now it's basically, if the user kicks it off, it's gonna go set the status for requested. Um, which it will not stop them from doing that a second or third or fourth time. And so we need to actually make an accommodation in this particular flow to make sure that we're not allowing uh, the status of the item or document to become requested in the scenario that we don't want it to. So in the case that it's pending approval, so while we're waiting for somebody to approve it, or in the scenario where we've actually completed the approval, we don't need to run the approval again, so we want to be, be able to stop that from running. So in this scenario, the thing to, that's important to note is it's a manual trigger, and the trigger conditions don't work on, on manual triggers, so I can't make that menu item go away. One day, maybe Microsoft will get that figured out and make that nice for us. But to handle this scenario, all we need to do is add a condition here that will simply check for whether or not the approval status is complete or pending or requested to make sure that we don't actually uh, set it to request it again. So to do that, we're, we should be able to check our approval status. So let's take a look and see if we have that here. It's not showing up, so that tells me that I did not get all of the properties for the particular document, so we're going to actually go get those properties now. So let's find get file properties. So this will actually get all of the properties. So we added those custom metadata fields. If you added any other ones, you'll probably need to use this particular action to get them. So we'll go after our demo data site and again our policies library and we'll pass in the ID of the file that was selected by the user. And now that should give us an approval status to work with. So if we do a search here for approval status, we've got our approval status from our get file properties. In this case, we only want it to run if it's not complete, not pending, and not requested. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this to not equal to and we're going to go pending, and we're going to add another row. And again, we're going to go after our approval status, and we're going to look for not equal to requested, and a final row, approval status is not equal to complete. So again, this is my completely contrived scenario. Your statuses may be different. You may want to allow them to run it again a second or third time if it's been completed. In my case, I, I want to stop that. Um, and so then what we're simply going to do is we're going to drag our shape that updates the status to uh, requested into this yes side of the condition. And 
In the no side, we're gonna do nothing. So the only time we'll actually set it to request it is if it's not actually in process and never been run. Um, and so now we should be able to save this. And now we're ready to test the full scenario. So I'm gonna come back out to my library. I'm gonna choose one of the documents and we're gonna go ahead and request policy approval. And just like any flow, this is gonna make sure it's gonna check your permissions and want you to uh, allow that to happen and then you can run the flow. And so this flow has actually started. So let's jump back and take a look and see if our flow is actually running. So it looks like it ran and it was successful. So let's take a quick look at that and see what it actually did. So in this particular scenario, it ran all three of these shapes successfully, and we can see that it went in the yes branch of our conditions, which means it should have updated our status to requested. So let's go out real quick and take a look at our document, and there we see approval status is actually requested. So that's exactly what we wanted to happen. So the next thing to figure out is did our other flow run? So let's take a look at the other flow that we created our policy approval. And in this particular case, we can actually see that we have one running. So what that means is that the item was updated or the document was updated, this flow triggered and it's running. Uh, so then the next question is, what happens if we um, actually make a change to that document um, in particular, what will happen? Um, so in this particular case, if we come in and let's say we open up the document, and again, you can see my policy is pretty light today. We add some comments to it. So it's saving, now it has actually saved. So the thing we wanna make sure here is that that flow does not run a second time. So we've just modified the document. We can come over here to our history and we can refresh this and we can see that it has not run again. And there you have it. That is a simple example of how you can actually control when your flows run based on trigger conditions and metadata that you set on a list or library. So just one other thing uh, to sum things up, and that is I would encourage you to look for other ways that you can enhance your process and your organization through this mechanism using trigger conditions and things like the approval status metadata column. Think of scenarios where you can add audit trail information to your, your documents and things like that. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up. Uh, if you wanna see more of this content, be sure that you subscribe. Another thing I'd like to highlight is we actually have a podcast now. It's called Make Others Successful, and it is intended for uh, people who want to find ways to enhance uh, the lives of the employees in their organizations and just find ways to make others successful. It's a special outreach for us uh, as another way to reach more people and make them successful. So we really love doing that. And then lastly, I want to mention a learning center that we have now on our website where you can find all sorts of content related to modern workplace categorized by different things like Power Apps, SharePoint, Power Automate, uh, and similar things. So I would encourage you to take a look at that if you're interested in, in following a learning path. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.